So, is the Raspberry Pi a bad controller for your astrophotography gear and your mount? Well, we'll find out in this video. Hello smart people, Chris here and we need to talk. As you probably already read from the title, I want to give you a brief update of my current rig situation and the frustration I faced the last time using it, even though I did manage to increase my picture quality a good bit with my Orion and Andromeda pictures. But that was no easy journey. So where am I coming from? If you'd asked me one or two weeks ago if I'm happy with the Pi, well, I most definitely would not have said yes, but rather ripped it into tiny pieces. Why you ask? Well, for example, as I was shooting the Pleiades a week ago, some bad stuff happened. I set up the rig about 5 p.m., but could get my first useful picture at about 8.30 p.m., while trying to find a fix that worked for me, because those damn connection issues. It ended with me pulling out my Ethernet USB adapter and connecting directly to the Pi, with me sitting out there in the cold. Well, the opposite of what should be the use case here. I already tried to work with a Wi-Fi extender, trying to extend the Astroberry signal, but I just could not get it working. I jumped from one problem to the next one and lost important imaging time. As the next step, I flashed Ubuntu onto my old laptop, installed ECOS, PHD2 and all the other good stuff on there, just to have a reliable solution. But surprise, that didn't work either because of some weird driver issue with the mount and also, I have to admit, the power consumption um, was also not that great of the laptop. I even went as far and did some research on other solutions with mini PCs, ASI Airs, Eagles and Intel Mocs. So, is the Raspberry Pi and Ecos a bad solution? Well, let me give you a quick overview about some points and then we can have a conclusion. But for the impatient, no, not at all. Lord. First off, what are important factors for remote astrophotography host devices? Well, number one, portability. You want your astrophoto rig not only to be at home, but you want to carry it around. So your device has to be portable. You don't want a huge gaming PC <laughs> standing out there uh, close to your rig. You want a small solution. The second point would be the power consumption I already talked about. You, for example, again, with the gaming PC, you can power this maybe for one hour or something uh, with your mobile uh, battery, but that's not your goal. You want to photograph maybe the whole night if your target is quite high in the uh, center. But apart from that, you are limited with your power. Going up to number three, connectivity. You uh, want to easily connect to your devices. You don't want to have like a big workflow to connect it. Uh, and at the same time, you want enough I.O. interfaces for all your equipment. Number four is it has to work in a reliable manner. You same uh, as I explained the problem earlier. You don't want to be a problem solver for the first few hours uh, after you've set up your gear. You want it to work plug and play style. So it has to be reliable. As the fifth point, I would argue that it should be able to work with ECOS as I'm really loving the Indie framework currently, uh, more and more. And to my understanding, but this may be um, the wrong understanding, uh, Indie or uh, ECOS is not available under any Windows operating system. So it either is a Linux distribution or uh, Mac OS, something like that, or Raspbian as for the Raspberry Pi. Coming back now, what are the main reasons it did not work and how to overcome them? Number one, connectivity. The Pi has a good amount of interfaces, many of them not even being used here in my use case, for example the S2C, etc. and the GPI opens. But mainly I'm talking about the Wi-Fi connection and potential USB 3 interferences. Initially I thought I had solved such problem 
but it never went 100% uh, away until this solution I'm going to share with you today in this video. Mainly, I got thrown out of the Pi's web interface at least once for every session and at the same time I could only receive the incoming data at a certain point in the house close to the backyard. I know, I know, it sounds like a Wi-Fi range issue right out of the gate, but this also happened when I was outside standing close to the telescope. On top of that, and even though I worked with Raspberry Pis before, I was not understanding all the things or settings that were already present in the Astroberry image, such as the setup VNC server and the hosted Wi-Fi spot. Therefore, I did not want to change some important setting and wanted everything to be default. The second big point, what went wrong, is uh, the reliability, and this is strongly connected to one. If I'm putting in all the effort just to set up the telescope with all its glory, it takes enough time and dedication. I don't want to spend a few hours troubleshooting the same problem over and over again. So coming back to the initial question, having mentioned all these facts, is the Pi a bad solution and incapable of fulfilling all these requirements? No, not at all. I use a Pi 3 for all of my home automation stuff for more than one year and it's doing great and working really reliable. It gets even better when you're getting used to it and understand more stuff that is happening in the background. Currently, I finally managed to get my setup to a good, reliable state and I want to share that with you in this video. Let's head over to the router connection, both for the network and the Raspberry Pi network. All right, so you should be seeing a little schematic I drew uh, some time ago. And um, yeah, this is depicting my home network now. So just to give you a brief uh, information here. So the left side, um, which is the greenish uh, color, is my outdoor section. So of course, this is the telescope, the Raspberry Pi and the travel router. And on the right side, we have the home network um, in blue. So starting off on the left side, we have uh, the telescope, which is all uh, uh, its periphery is connected to the Raspberry Pi via USB and so on. And the main important thing is that the Raspberry Pi is not hosting any uh, SSID uh, on its own. I totally, um, well, disabled that, but it is uh, merely connected via an ethernet cable to the travel router. In on top of that, um, it's not hosting any Wi-Fi spot, but um, it's also connected to the home network directly, which is just redundancy, but um, uh, I just wanted to bring that also, this fact in. Then we have the travel router. You saw that earlier that um, I tried to set it up, but it did not work. I did a um, firmware update, then um, the connectivity to the router was um, improved. And now this router is uh, sitting outside, uh, close to my telescope, and is repeating the uh, Fritzbox home Wi-Fi router on the right. So uh, this is as an extension, but at the same time an Ethernet access point for my Raspberry Pi. Uh, but that means let's go over to the right side. So this is my <laughs> home Wi-Fi router right now, uh, both uh, on the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band. Uh, working both ways. Then um, on top of that, also connected to my home Wi-Fi router, uh, we got a NAS attached via Ethernet, which is a network attached storage. Yeah, I uh, got one of those as well <laughs> for my, well, first for my YouTube stuff and also for my Astro images. But I think this will be a separate video. Um, so on the same network. And then we have both um, the clients, which are connected via a well VNC application. As explained before, you could simply go into the Raspberry Pi um, GUI via well the browser. But instead, uh, what I found to be more stable was to simply use a VNC client. And by that way, um, either the laptop or with a smartphone, you can connect to well, a the travel router or to the um, right uh, to the Fritzbox router on the right side, and both ways I was able to access the Raspberry Pi. So that's even better. You don't need to be at a certain um, router connected. And the other good thing is um, I installed a 
uh, VNC client for my smartphone as well. I explained in the smartphone video that um, it did not work that well with the smartphone browser to access the strawberry judge local slash desktop. So um, with a VNC client app, you can easily connect to the Raspberry Pi and also set up the eco server. This means um, by that you don't need any form of laptop if you are going to an imaging session, you just need your smartphone, can set up the eco server and also then use the Telescope Touch app for controlling all the features once the server is set up. So that's working right, quite well for me. On top of that, um, the good thing is, as everything is in the same network, my Raspberry Pi now also has a uh, internet connection all the time. So it will get an updated uh, time and location, but also for plate solving, you could use some online databases. And if you would go even one step farther, you could <laughs> set up a remote um, uh, imaging uh, setup at your site. So you could image while not being at home, but I don't see the real purpose of that yet because well, all your expensive stuff is out and you're not at home. I don't think you want that. So yeah, there is that. Now let me think, um, what else can I tell you here? So the good thing now, everything is in the same network. I can also I'm easily access it from my smartphone. So this means when I'm going to sleep or, um, well, when I'm waking up in the middle of the night and want to control it, I just have my smartphone close to the uh, bed and just check it once again. So that's uh, one good feature. And it's so much more stable with this configuration. But in order to demonstrate it, uh, I want to give you a real uh, world example. So I'll set up the Pi on the outside and we can have a look at it with uh, the real laptop now. Okay. Okay, so I put it where I normally would put my telescope. Um, we're not expecting any clear skies today, so I did not bother to bring it outside. So, connected to the power, connected here via Ethernet. Let's go! So, I'm indoors now again, and you can see me here. I got my laptop here with me. I'm at my local Wi Fi now, so being in the Fritz box. And now it's time to head over to the VNC client here. And what we'll see, yeah! We connected, so um, of course I did not connect any of the, um, well, telescope uh, periphery, but in theory I could just here click on KSTARS. Let's take one second to load and it's booting up. Let's make this a full screen as well here. So tip of the day, that's great. Blah blah blah, yada yada yada, and now we could, in theory, if it doesn't lag, I guess it's because of the GUI, do have some more information to be transported. Okay, it's like a demonstration effect, of course. And once I'm showing you stuff, it doesn't work. <laughs> ah, come on. Maybe we'll cut here real quick. And okay, now I'm back in full screen mode, so in um, theory, and we could go here into ECOS, have our standard window open. I could hit start and then everything would pop up being uh, not able to connect. Yes, so failed, failed, failed. Okay, but you see, I'm sitting here indoors, not even in the living room, close to the um, uh, backyard, but uh, far away here in my working room and I'm still able to connect to it, so that's really, really neat. Now there are two ways to connect it. One, um, either I'm in the local uh, network, just going over, over um, with the IP address. And one thing you need to take care is to also have a static IP address for your AstroBerry Raspberry Pi set. Because uh, if not, you if you're using DHCP for that, which would be dynamically alloca allocating a IP address, then you need to look it up every time. But if you give it a fixed IP address, then you can easily connect to it. Um, so this is the first option, you're in the same network. Or the second option, which would also um, work, as I've checked out just like a few minutes ago, is to um, for Raspberry Pi um, systems, there is a um, client option here, 
So I've seen that as, as well. So um, there's a free trial, or not, uh, it's not a trial, there, but there is a free inversion with real VNC where you can attach up to, I think, five devices, um, including your Raspberry Pi, to a, well, cloud, not cloud, but your, to your network, let's call it that. And then the driver, stop, ignore that. Uh, sorry, <laughs> and by that way you can be um, sitting anywhere and uh, connect to it. So it's like I don't know, it's like a standard uh, stuff like uh, screen sharing applications. Um, so you can be access it from anywhere on the internet, which would also be an option if you if you'd like to have it that way. So even when you're on mobile or um, I don't know, you're moving uh, out that night and still want to see whether the capturing at home works, then uh, why not go that way and some errors. Okay, let's ignore the errors. I'm, I'm done talking actually, <laughs> but we see it's working. Um, that That's one major aspect that was bugging me because it, well, I can't have it um, in, in such a unreliable manner. And well, I was really frustrated that day, so I put a lot of effort into finding another solution that works for me and to be honest um, now actually I really really love the Indie framework and uh, as well as the Raspberry Pi as a solution because it's open source, it's cheap, it's small and well you, you can easily find lots of uh, suitable software for it so instead of going with ASI Air which well to be honest, from my point of view, is like a modified recipe. <laughs> uh, plus, it's only um, supporting the ZWO framework. For me, this is like a much more well broad uh, use case here with the Raspberry Pi and even with the Astroberry image as well. All right, folks. So um, I think we'll end the video here. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully I could help you uh, improving um, with your connectivity problems for your Raspberry Pi installation. If at any case you have questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them or maybe some other viewers will know better than they'll be answering as well. So uh, this was the first part of my improving my smart telescope um, series here. So um, we'll have another one maybe even a third one. And uh, yeah, that's it. Cruise out and clear skies.